What is emergency management? Anybody want to take a stab at that one? Well, I can tell you this. It's not an easy question to answer. Uh, and if you ask Joe Public what's emergency management, most people immediately think of ambulances, EMS, firefighters, and police. Um, while we do certainly interact with those disciplines and those communities, it, it's very much a tangent to em emergency management. Emergency management is much broader than that, and I hope to enlighten some of you. I know some of you are old hats at this, but for some of the new folks, tell you a little bit about emergency management as a profession and as a field of study, and tell you a little bit about how we do it in emergency, or excuse me, in Hillsborough County which I think is fairly typical for other counties here in the region and throughout the state of Florida. If you can hit the next... Uh... There we go. Um, we say emergency management has four phases. Uh, they don't particularly start and stop at any given spot. It's an ongoing process. But mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Now at any given time, the emergency management agency or department in your jurisdiction should be somewhere between mitigation and preparedness, um, assuming that a disaster didn't just occur. But mitigation is things like building codes. Uh, should we build in a flood zone? Should that house be elevated? Should we require people to have storm shutters? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So we work a lot with our planning and zoning officials, with our risk management folks, to, to make sure that we're doing the right things to mitigate against the risk of potential disasters. And that's where that mitigation phase comes in. Emergency management should have a leadership role in that to make sure that we're not doing things like, you know, building houses where they're all going to get, you know, blown down in a hurricane or building in a, in a flood zone next to a river. Uh, and then we should, you know, do things like make sure our building codes are, are up to standard so that our, our structures uh, are, are survivable in the event of uh, the different types of risks that we're exposed to. The next phase is preparedness. And that's a lot of what you all are all doing here this weekend is training, education, learning what you personally and you as an organization can do to be prepared for the next disaster. Things like having your, your supply kit, all of your, uh, your equipment, your evacuation plan, the plan for your family, your dogs, your cats, your car, your boat. Uh, we really do encourage the public to be prepared because the government cannot do it all for you. And that really is where CERT teams and other volunteer organizations play a critical role, both in preparing yourselves and in teaching and showing the public how to be more prepared. Then, of course, somewhere between preparedness and response, uh, the assumption is that a disaster occurred. And that response phase is what most people think of when they think of emergency management. Uh, we get a lot of questions, well, what do you guys do the other six months out of the year when it's not hurricane season? Well, the answer is we're in that mitigation and preparedness phase. We're doing a lot of public speaking, a lot of training, exercises, uh, you name it, we stay pretty busy. But following a disaster, we would move into that response phase, and that's where you start seeing things like the activation of the Emergency Operations Center and the coordination of different people's resources. You'll notice I use the word coordination there and not control. Uh, generally speaking, emergency managers, emergency management departments or agencies do not control anything. Now, that may surprise some of you. But generally, we coordinate and we facilitate. We do not own the resources. We do not have command and control over anything. And as you can imagine, that can be a tricky place to be sometimes. But what we do is find where the need is, and then we find out who has the resource that you need, and we go talk to that person and tell them to talk to you. That is emergency management in a nutshell. It's a little bit different than a lot of people's perceptions of the field. Then, of course, following that initial response phase, we would move into recovery. And recovery blurs again back into mitigation. When we rebuild, when we recover from a disaster, we want to make sure we're more resilient to that same disaster next time. So when we rebuild your house, well, maybe we should improve those building codes. Maybe we should make sure that your, your house is elevated or, or your storm shutters are, are put in place this next time. So that's kind of just a brief rundown of the emergency management cycle as we call it. And I think it does a real good job of visually putting it into perspective of, you know, what emergency managers do and what the profession and the discipline of emergency management represents.